Hello, everyone. It's Curious Raven back with some more spooky paranormal. I love this kind of stuff. I grew up kind of seeing ghosts, and I'm a really big believer. Well, let's get to these stories. Number one The house I grew up in was haunted. There are two ghosts in the house that I know of for sure. They were a man and a woman. The man appeared often to me. She wore a beautiful pink dress. The man wore an old style hat. They both dressed like they were from the 1800s. My bedroom in particular had more paranormal activity. We had guests stay and somebody else saw them. Then I was in high school. I moved into a different bedroom. I didn't see them in there. We made an old room into a spare bedroom. My dad would sometimes take a nap in there, and he saw them too. These ghosts were never scary, just there. The lady enjoyed playing tricks on me and my siblings, and would call our names sounding like my mom. She would do it when my mom was at home. She also would do it when we were adults, spending the night for the holidays. When my mom sold the house, I was helping her move some things out of my room. The woman appeared to me one last time. I like to think she was saying goodbye. Number two. In 2004, a 77-year-old woman died in her chair and no one found her until two weeks later. For a whole year, me and my boyfriend have lived here, and we've always felt like something wasn't quite right. We even used a ghost app that used radio FM waves that makes word pop up on the screen using a dictionary months ago, and it said grandma, chair, and dead. Like, what? So... I did some research and just wanted to know a few more things. I ran a report and found her full name and when she was born and some of her family members' name. All of them had passed except for her daughter. I emailed letting her know that I live in her mother's house and that I have a few questions for her. What questions are acceptable or respectful to ask? I just want to know how long she lived here for and just maybe some of her favorite things. And I'm really curious what she looked like. I just feel really sad not having known she died right in the living room this whole time. Explains my bad mushroom trips though. <laughs> I just wanted to know more about her life. The neighbors did say she had a brain aneurysm towards the end of her life and she lined up flower pots on the property line so that they wouldn't walk on her yard. Anyways, please leave any suggestions or advice Number three, when I was like five or six, I used to live in a very haunted neighborhood where someone died in the house across the street. I have about three stories from this house, but it is the most significant. My mom told me the story because I was asleep when it happened. She heard banging from me and my sister's room, so she went to check if one of us was awake or kicked in the wall. When she checked, we were asleep and far from a wall. She took my sister into her room. My mom's bed was away from the wall. She still heard the noise. She brought me into her room and she still heard the noise. It got louder and to this day, we still have no idea what the noise was. Our first thought was an intruder, but on the cameras, it never showed anyone entering the house. Someone please comment what you think. By the way, this happened in a creepy part of Florida. Number four, only been in my home for a little over two years now. Nothing was happening in the beginning, but now a bunch of unexplained stuff is going on daily. And it's usually happening in front of two people 
sometimes the whole household, the sink, shower, running full force, someone walking around really heavy-footed, lights being turned off when using the bathroom, so fucking annoying, or being turned on while we were hanging out in the living room, a weird smell coming from the hallway like something rotted, a few of us have heard a voice saying hello, hey, or our names being called out, Heavy breathing like someone struggling coming from the bathroom closet. Bathroom exhaust fans being turned on. Doors closing on us while in the pantry. Recliner rocking on its own. Also seeing a gray shadow figure walking around. The house doesn't have a heavy feeling or anything. But when stuff happens, me personally, I say nope. Usually just turn off whatever was turned on and leave the room. Kind of annoyed and fed up, especially if the sink or shower was running long enough. We have to wait for the hot water to fill back up. With the cost of living going up, I really don't want to pay for an increase on our bills. I had the insurance company do an inspection for an unrelated issue. Had them check the electricity and other issues and didn't find anything wrong. Then even checked the alarms monoxide for me and everything was cleared. We are not religious household, so not sure if we could get a priest or father to bless the house or how we even go about requesting something like that. Can we burn some sage or would that make it worse? The activity is ramping up. It was fine every once in a while, but now it happens multiple times a day. Number five, nearly two years ago, I was in a very dark place. During the long sleepless nights, I spent abusing drugs and alcohol and began to see visions of people in my home. It started as glimpses of shadows scurrying around corners. The shadows grew bolder and eventually I would see them standing still, peeking from the corners watching me. They were all just shadows, creepy, but easy enough to ignore. During a particularly dark night, they surrounded me. They watched me all night, creeping closer as I slipped deeper into my depression. I began to see them in the daylight. After this, I started spending as much time out of the house as possible, eventually getting sober. Things quieted down for a long time. Then I saw her. I got up to use the bathroom, and there was a woman peeking around the corner from the kitchen. She had long, curly, greasy hair. Her unnaturally long fingers wrapped around the wall. Her skin was wrinkled and fingernails were long, dirty, and chipped. She had no face. In its place was a blurred, swirling mass. I stared at her. She slowly, deliberately withdrew her head behind the corner. Her hands followed a moment later. I charged around the corner and found nothing. Immediately afterwards, I performed a banishing ritual, and the air felt lighter. I haven't seen her since. I drew a picture of her in my sketchbook. Weeks later, I brought a girl home from the bar, and she stayed at night. While we were getting ready for bed, she asked if the house was haunted. I was surprised. We hadn't talked about anything spooky or spiritual all night. I said it was, but I cleansed it. She said she felt a heavy presence. Later that night, she got out of bed to go to the bathroom and started screaming. I ran to see what had happened, and she was sitting on the floor crying. She said she saw a woman in the kitchen. A woman charged at her, then disappeared. I asked her to describe the woman she couldn't. I showed her my sketch, and she began to bawl hysterically. It was the same woman. I drew sigils on the wall with chalk, and we slept with the lights on and TV on. Fast forward about nine months. I'm in a new house in a new town. An old friend comes to visit and sleeps over. As she's leaving, she has me walk her to her car. While standing in the road, she whispers to me that she's a medium and she saw something that looked like a woman sulking around my home. 
She describes exactly the same woman as before and warns me she doesn't believe it's a human spirit. She also sensed a strong masculine presence. She couldn't describe him, like he was stuck behind a veil. Things had been calm here until recently. Now I'm feeling faces. Now I'm seeing faces behind corners. I'm hearing footsteps. Doors are opening and closing at night. And when everything's quiet, I hear crashing. And I can't find anything out of place. I've seen a clear silhouette of a man walk into the room as I wrote notes in my office. I saw what looked like the same man running up the stairs. But instead of shadows, this one was a silhouette of pure white light. He passed through me. I felt all the heat leave my body. The stray cat I recently let in is very calm, but has a strong reaction to these paranormal activities. I've just done a cleansing with three king's incense and dragon's blood, dipped sage sticks. As I write this, I hear the sounds of fingernails tapping on different windows throughout my home. If anyone has any insight on what this is and how to get rid of it, I would graciously appreciate the input. I've had many experiences in the past, but nothing so obsessive or persistent. My medium friend is afraid for my health, and I'm afraid for my sanity. You need to be cleansed. Seems like you are the one that's haunted. Number six, I don't know how old, I was probably five or maybe seven. I don't know, but anyways, we had a hall in our home and the bathroom was at the end of the hall. I woke up one night and needed to use the bathroom. I got up and started walking towards the hall, but I stopped midway. I saw a figure, it was white. It was a man, he was pretty tall, literally about to touch the ceiling or something. It looked like he was wearing a suit and he just stood there, doing nothing. My memory is a bit blurry, but I think I tried touching the figure while I walked through it. When I looked back, all I saw was white mist and ran. The second time. Again, woke up at night to use a bathroom. He was there again, and he wasn't alone. There was a little boy next to him. Same thing. White figure with a suit. I was the same height as him. I walked close, really close, but I didn't touch this time. I stared at the man and back at the boy, and I walked through them. When I walked through, everything felt cold chills running down my spine, and looked back. Missed again. I never saw them after that. Until two years ago. Different home, but this one also had a hall, but it was smaller. I was going to the bathroom. Again. At night. Then I took a pause. The man was there, but this time he was at the end of the hallway. For some reason, as a kid, I wasn't afraid of the man or boy. It felt like they weren't evil spirits. But when I recently saw the man, it sort of creeped me out. Almost like I was, like I wasn't safe. I ignored it. And after I did my business, I peeked at the end of the hallway before getting out of the bathroom. He had left. Have not seen him since. Number seven, freshman year of high school, shooting some basketball with my friends in the driveway. Hour or two passes, and as we typically do, we place the basketball through one of the broken windows in my large garage door. Missed a three few years back, not the best design garage, and not the best three-point shooter. We start walking to my house a good 20 yards away. And as we were at my door, we heard a large crash. We turned around to see the ball had broken through the adjacent window. It was bouncing towards us. Unlike most scary movies where you go and inspect, we were terrified. Ran inside and rarely ever talk about it. I thought it over and over and could not come up with a logical explanation. Did it bounce off the floor 
into the car, onto the ceiling, around and around like a mousetrap game, until finally 15 seconds later, crashing through? No way. Was there a homeless man playing a prank? And if so, why would he blow his cover? My parents would never sacrifice a window to scare me. My sibling was two years old and inside. No other friends around. Again, I will never know what caused that ball to crash through the window 10 to 15 seconds after carefully placing it through the garage door. Now, those stories were a little spookier. Um, got some chills here and there. I hope you'll have a lovely rest of y'all's week. I will see you for our creepy pasta Saturday. Until then, remember, it's scary out there. Also, love y'all so much. Please like and subscribe.